A portion of this video is sponsored by Squarespace. The Wither, the second boss of Minecraft. A haunting, floating nightmare that's eluded all explanations since its introduction back in 2017. The Ancient Builders, a civilization lost to history, their works brought to ruin, and their name eroded by time. The Warden, the newest threat to this world, a creature of blind rage engulfed in shadow, an unstoppable force fueled by souls and empowered by darkness. Three groups, three distinct mysteries waiting to be solved, and all of them united by this. Hello, Internet! Welcome to Game Theory, the show that can't wait to hear you click that subscribe button. Oh, oh. Is it safe? Are we okay? So, yeah, sorry about that. I kind of forgot the Warden was a thing. But can you blame me? The Warden was due to come out in the summer of 2021, but then the Deep Dark ended up getting removed from the update, which itself got split into two parts. Speaking of two parts, no, don't worry, this episode isn't a two-parter, but we do have ourselves a second Minecraft video happening today over on Food Theory. That's right, we got ourselves a Minecraft weekend, y'all. Well, here we're busy dissecting the latest additions from the Wild Update. Over on Food Theory, we're talking all about the Dream SMP, which... Honestly, doesn't sound very foodie, but then Dream decided to go and kill Tommy in it using a potato. And you know where there is murder to be had, we'll probably find a way to make a theory out of it. So head on over there for all your potato murder needs after you're done with this video, because first, we gotta finish talking about the Warden. As of this week, it has finally launched as part of the Wild Update. According to Mojang, not only have the mechanics of the Warden been refined, but they've added new blocks to the Deep Dark, new items, and oh yeah, we're also getting one of the coolest, most complex and interesting structures ever created in Minecraft, the Ancient Cities. Based on the name alone, this seems like the thing that we've been theorizing about for years. Oh, victory has never felt so good. But you know what feels even better than being right? Having new lore to chew on. Mojang understands that you don't just drop an entire underground city complete with giant burning portal frame into your game without considering what it's doing there from a story perspective. And similarly, you don't just introduce the single strongest mob to guard it without factoring in the rationale for placing it there. So our question is why? What does all of this mean for the secret story of Minecraft? How do these disparate parts wind up working together? Well, shockingly, not only is everything here connected, but all of it is also tied to one of the longest standing mysteries in the game, the Wither. But to decode it all, we actually need one key item. An item that's been broken up and hidden throughout all of these updates. Something innocuous. Something unsuspecting. A simple music disc. Everything is unlocked through this one disc. So so what is the story of the Deep Dark and how does it tie into the narrative that we've been building over the last three years? Strap in, friends, because today we're diving in deep to tap into the darkest lore of Minecraft. First, let's talk about the Skulk. When the Skulk family of blocks was originally announced in 2020, we understood the basics. A Skulk sensor reacts to noise, and when it does, it alerts a fearsome monster known as the Warden to your exact location. Two hits later, you dead, son. But now we have more details, and what we've learned is disturbing, to say the least. A new block called the Skulk Catalyst basically takes in energy to transform the blocks around it into other Skulk blocks. That's how this creature is able to spread, but it begs the question, what energy is it using to convert these regular blocks? Well, this ain't your grandma's moss blocks that you can just bone meal around, my friends. These things take something a bit more potent than that. The souls of the living. You see, if a mob dies within eight blocks of the Catalyst, the mob won't drop XP orbs. Instead, souls appear above the Catalyst, at which point the Skulk spreads to new blocks. Remind me, where have we seen souls? in relation to this update before? Oh yeah, the Warden. In the middle of its chest, we have what looked to be the faces of three trapped souls. Now, in our last theory, we speculated that Wardens were created using a combination of Skulk and souls in order to protect the underground cities. However, I'm not so sure anymore. Back in 2020, we got this tweet from 1.19 developer Brandon Pierce, which says, quote, you could definitely argue that the Skulk in general is sentient. Now, we just talked about how when a mob dies near the Skulk catalyst, it creates new Skulk blocks, but it can also create a new block called the Skulk Shrine. Shrieker. This block is the key, because not only does it have souls swirling around inside of it, thereby confirming that it's being created from the souls of the dead, but it also makes these sounds. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's fine. I didn't need to sleep tonight. Minecraft is totally a kid's game. Anyway, that shriek isn't just signaling that I have to take an adult diaper change. When it goes off, you'll hear another noise. The sound of something burrowing up to the surface. That something is the warden. So what am I saying here? Well, I'm suggesting that the warden wasn't created by the ancient builders to protect themselves. Instead, I think it was made by the skulk to protect itself. When it senses danger, it summons a creature made of skulk. An unstoppable force that acts as the final line of defense trying to ensure the survival of this species. And this is actually supported by the warden item drops. You see, if you manage to take one down, it drops a single skulk catalyst, which honestly feels like a crummy reward for something so difficult. However, from a lore standpoint, it makes perfect sense. If the warden's primary objective is indeed the survival of the species, then in defeat, it would want to release a last-ditch attempt to keep the species alive. Hence, a single catalyst. But that still doesn't answer the major question, where did the skulk come from in the first place? For that, we actually have to take a closer look at the new biome, the Deep Dark, and more importantly, those ancient cities. Once you enter the Deep Dark biome, you start to find these patches of skulk blocks. If you follow these patches further down into the cave, eventually you'll find an ancient city, ruins covered in even more skulk. Logic would dictate that since the concentration of skulk is higher in the cities, this must be where it originated. And this seems to be correct. In the ancient cities, the hallways are covered in wool and carpets. That's an important detail since the skulk and wardens are sound-based entities. They respond to your steps. And wouldn't you know, wool and carpet are the only blocks that don't activate the skulk when they're walked on. This tells us that the inhabitants of the ancient city were clearly aware of the warden, and they were trying to live their best alongside it. However, just because this seems to be where the warden lives now doesn't mean that it's always been here. Right in the middle of the ancient cities is a massive structure made out of a new block called Reinforced Deep Slate, an immovable, indestructible block similar to the end portal frames. But that's not where the similarities end. In the game files, this big structure of Reinforced Deep Slate is known as the City Center. It's a pretty generic name, right? Doesn't really tell us all that much. However, there are smaller versions of that same city center dotted around, and in the game files, they're known as small portal statues. Portal, you say? Now sure, Mojang has said for years that it isn't adding any new dimensions, but that's missing the point. I don't think Mojang is introducing a new dimension, I think they're introducing the idea of a new dimension as they continue to explain Minecraft's history. A history that becomes a lot more clear thanks to one little item. Or should I say nine little items that make up a bigger one? Disc number five. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, we've got ourselves a new number disc. And you know what that means, sound-based storytelling. But before I can start piecing together the disc and the lore, I've got to tell you about how you can start piecing together a great website because this portion of today's episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for building your brand and growing your business online. Or in my case, your cat's business. That's right, I made a website dedicated to my cat Skip's beauty pics. Why? Because while I could have done something predictable, like show you one of the multiple professional sites that we've made in the past using Squarespace, I instead wanted an excuse to show you some top tier skip content. And making websites with Squarespace is so fast and easy, I was like, why not? So true story, I've tried to make websites in the past and I could barely get one picture on the front page. And when I did, it was pixelated and weirdly sized and stayed oddly skewed to the right. It was a hot mess. My C++ was more like D minus minus. But with Squarespace's editable templates, you can make a website that looks professional and amazing in minutes. No joke, you have to actively try to make them look bad. I mean, look, I'm practically designing Skip's new site in real time using their template as I talk to you. Look at him. How can you resist that sweet cuddly boy? Or hey, maybe you're trying to do something more important than turn your cat into the next feel-in fluencer. Yeah, it doesn't work as well as it should. Say you're a freelance artist trying to book commissions. Boom, Squarespace has an interactive booking system built in. Are you a professional looking for a new job and you want a place to showcase your resume? Done and done. Want to offer exclusive content to loyal members? Squarespace makes that sort of thing easy to implement. Also, note to self, only cat section of Skip's site for the spiciest images, like sleeping and post bath. So if you want to start building your perfect website using these incredible tools, then head on over to squarespace.com slash matpat. Or, you know the drill by now, just click the link in the top line of the description. Make sure you use the code matpat, M-A-T-P-A-T, -A -A spelled the correct way, to save 10% on your first website or domain. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring this part of the episode. Thank you for supporting Skip's modeling career. And now, back to our episode. As I alluded to, Disc 5 is actually split into nine fragments which can be found in chests throughout the ancient city. But instead of delightful music, this one follows in the footsteps of Discs 11 and 13, a sound effect driven track that's designed to tell us a story in order to fill out the lore of what's going on here. The track starts off with the classic sound of static, like you'd expect from an old record player, but it begins to ramp up into a loud rumble which is then immediately cut off, followed by what appears to be the speed up of time.
We'll hear these sorts of speed ramp effects a lot throughout the disc. The next set of sounds are ones that are familiar to anyone who knows discs 11 and 13. The sound of someone walking underground. This time on dripstone. You can tell based on the footsteps. Using their flint and steel to light a fire while bats flutter through the cave. However, as this character walks, it eventually turns into a march, which is then joined by other footsteps coming from what seems like heavily armored soldiers. We can make out sirens going off in the background. It all comes to an abrupt halt when something that sounds like a lever gets pulled. Now, I looked through a lot of Minecraft sounds, but there are a number of sounds in this track that I couldn't find exact matches for. It sounds like they've added extra sound effects to help build out the story. Like in this case, the sound of a lever is more like a switch being flicked, but in the track it feels much bigger, like a lever that's attached to a large mechanism. Cause following that sound, we hear some creaking and the sound of wind rushing in, like a huge door that's being opened. After this, we hear our character take a deep breath, only to then hear a monster shriek. So far, it feels relatively self-explanatory. The first person we hear walking is someone leading a charge or a group of soldiers, lighting a torch to help them walk underground. In the distance, we hear the warning sirens of a city blaring. They open the door in order to defend the city against something when suddenly, the disc has a weird break. We hear 23 seconds of just music. It's almost like different discs have been smashed together. It was in fragments after all. That would also probably explain all the time warping effects we hear throughout the track. Different chunks of the disc were recorded at different RPMs, which is why the audio is constantly warped and shifting. Anyway, when the music ends, we're back to the story. Bubbling lava can be heard, while more footsteps on dripstone move towards an amethyst. They break the block, and doing so seems to set off some sort of a cave-in. It's not really a sound I recognize, and the closest I could find were mood sounds from the nether wastelands, which would explain the lava, but not really the dripstone floor of the amethyst. After the cave-in, we hear screeches off in the distance. Screeches of what appear to be phantoms doesn't make a whole lot of sense underground. However, very shortly afterwards, we hear our character run quickly, and the terrain changes from dripstone to stone to dirt. Meaning that he's running relatively close to the surface. We hear the clanging of tools as they collect materials, coughing as they light fires to see. <coughs> But he clearly sees something that causes him to run away quickly, only to then reveal another monster roar, which is again quickly distorted by the change of scene from the disc. Thuds are now heard in the background, explosions distorted by the cave system. Our character places down sand, scrapes a metal tool against a stony object, and finally a mechanical noise is heard, all while eerie voices whisper in the background, similar to that of the soul sand valleys. But the explosions are getting more frequent, until eventually one bursts into the area. There's a brief moment of silence before suddenly the reverse sound of glass is heard, and we hear the souls shriek in a huge gust, leaving nothing but a warping hum in the background, all of which sounds very similar to the creation of a portal. In that moment, our character takes a few steps towards the portal, we know this because the sound gets louder, until he places down dirt blocks to help him reach it, where we are then met with the sound of a skulk sensor and the roar of a warden. <laughs> actually winds down here, but there's actually one more sound mixed in with the warden roar. Listen carefully. Did you catch it? The warden roars, and it's closely followed by a slowed down death sound from one very specific mob, the Wither. So, that's the breakdown of the disc from what I can hear, but thinking about the story fragments that we have, the question is, what does it mean? Well, let's actually talk about that last bit. A member of an ancient builder society, the same one that made these underground cities, is out caving, collecting precious materials, when all of a sudden he hears something out in the distance. He rushes to the surface, only to see the wither floating there. This leads to the first section of the disc with the emergency sirens blaring. The wither is on its way, so the city needs to mobilize its army to try and take it down. They travel through the caves until 
until they get to a secure entrance. When they open the gates, it's clear that their worst fears have come true. The Wither has followed the colonists down into the depths. They can hear the Wither's explosions in the distance, getting closer and more frequent. Desperate for an escape, they rush to finish the new portal technology they've been working on. They've clearly built portals before, specifically to the Nether where they've learned about the properties of Soul Sand. We know this because of the lanterns that are all around the ancient city. They begin to make the final touches to their portal. They make it out of a block that is so impenetrable, not even the Wither can destroy it. This is gonna be their ticket out. They place Soul Sand underneath this new portal and they light it, which is exactly what we see left over in the ancient cities. There are also still remnants of their experiments underneath the portal. Redstone circuits experimenting with powering blocks, how much power you can output with different objects, redirecting power. Ultimately, Soul Sand seems to be the most powerful source of energy. Combining all of these things together allows them to open the portal. The souls from the Soul Sand screaming as they're used to power it. At that moment, the Wither breaks through. The Builder makes his way to the portal to escape, but it's not what they expect. From the portal comes the Warden, who destroys the Wither, but also brings the Skulk into this world. And so that is the story of Disc 5, the origins of the Warden. It's not an experiment gone wrong, it's a desperate escape attempt to the wrong place, which brings with it a new and deadly invasive species, the Skulk. But the thing is, Disc 5 isn't the end of our story, because how did the ancient builders go from here all the way to the end? Well, it may be slightly more speculative, but hear me out. The Warden comes through the portal and kills the Wither. This wasn't the ancient builder's intent, but hey, it worked out for him regardless. And so they worship the Warden as some kind of god. This is why there are candles all around the portal, along with the portal being shaped to look like the Warden. However, this blissful ignorance doesn't last forever. The ancient builders carry on with their lives, but doing so activates the new skulk that's around, which eventually resummons the Warden. The Warden then goes on to kill many ancient builders, spreading the skulk further. Those that do manage to survive try what they can to remain in the city that they've built. They put down carpets and wool to make sure that they don't make sounds while walking around, but it's not enough. Even opening their chests sets the skulk off, and so they're forced to leave the city. The few that remain decide rather than building vast cities to instead build one fortified fortress, the Stronghold, built with confusing hallways and winding staircases in order to give them the ability to outrun the Warden should the Skulk make its way to them. In these Strongholds, they create the End Portals and use them to escape from this unforgiving world, only to then get stuck on the other side. So, there you have it, the origin of one of Minecraft's newest and most dangerous mobs. The Warden isn't a failed experiment, but rather an invasive species that came from another world, and while many are begging for a new dimension to be added to the game, Disc 5 serves as a warning of what happens when you open portals to mysterious new lands. If the Warden is what popped out last time, I fear what lies in wait should we open it again. But hey, that's just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching.